first live stream of 2024. That's not the first live stream, but the first of the regular live streams. Now, this is a bit of a secret hidden pirate broadcast. I haven't announced I was doing this. The reason being, I wasn't sure I was going to be back in time from work. That was a problem I had last week. But we are here, and that is good. Well, I am here anyway. I don't know if anyone else is. And it's always a pleasure. Now, what we're going to be looking at is during the British summertime, hopefully most Wednesdays, I will be doing a live stream. Now, we used to do these before. They are paint-alongs if you are new to the channel. So basically, it's just an excuse to hang out, get some models painted or uh, things like that. And today, I am going to have a look at some salute goodies in these three here. I wouldn't normally do that, but the idea here is it's a company that people may not have seen or heard of before. So hopefully there's some enjoyment there. And I'm going to be putting together this two-horse apothecary wagon with wounded and surgeons and orderlies. This is going to be my uh, vignette when we do Under Eagles to Glory uh, down in Derby. This is going to be attending my russian army so looking forward to that so those of you who went to salute did you spend too much i certainly did what did you buy those of you who didn't go to salute then uh I, to be honest i wasn't mega impressed with it this year so i don't think you missed out on a huge amount but um what are your plans for the summer campaign season what are you going to be working on what are you going to be trying to get together oh let me just turn off the noise of my laptop um the internet up here i'm in general dad's attic because i get really good light up here i am uh the internet up here is not great though so if it drops in and off let me know um i saw a couple of comments there uh, did i see ben it was indeed a uh, a pleasure to catch up with you at salute it was really nice to see you and grim something you've gone off my uh, my screen ah here we are it's just popped up uh, Grim Harbinger, greetings. You could not go to sleep. Well, as I say, I'm not sure it wasn't too uh, wasn't too bad. Chris, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. And now I feel I can't come to Un Eagle to Glory. Oh no, that truly. Oh, that is bad. Oh, never mind. Thank you, Michael. It was indeed a pleasure seeing you in Chicago. And that um, steak dinner was. I'm still thinking about it now. It was absolutely delicious. It was great to meet you both. And. Um, yeah, as I say, hopefully I'll be there not next year, the year after. I might be doing some more 30k related goodness on that one. So, Dino Knights, yes, the live streams are back. They are back every Wednesday, as far as I can see. The uh, NHS, God bless her, has run out of money. So, uh, I'm not sure we were doing much overtime. <laughs> but uh, I shall let you know as and when. So, neither can I on account of being on the West Coast. Well, I think that's fair enough, Dan. I'm assuming that's the West Coast of the United States. I'll let you off on that one then. So, these miniatures here, I've got three. They are from um, Gringo 40s. Now, the Gringo 40 are a manufacturer I have mentioned very briefly in the past. Uh, they tend not to have a huge Napoleonic range. They tend to do Maximilian's Adventures in Mexico, as the name suggests, uh, in 40 mil. And uh, other stuff like that. But they do have a really nice range of Napoleonic characters. And I thought we'd have a look at some today. So this one here. Now, this guy really should be mounted, I think. It's a shame that he's on foot. Because he was most famous as a cavalry commander. But this is everyone's favourite. You're and my favourite. Hang on, let me see if I can focus in. I can't really. Mm. He's your and my favourite. This is... General Grouchy. So he's got like a cape on, which is quite nice. He's going to be quite nice um, uh, on a base with Napoleon, something like that, maybe bowing to him. Um, he's quite nice, I thought. The face, he looks quite an old man. There's quite a bit of flashy on here, though. Um, again, you probably can't see on the um, uh, the camera because my camera is terrible. Um, bear with me one second. This is not going to help a huge amount, but it might help a little. Give it a uh, bit of a rub. There we are. Um, yeah, no, it's still not great. Because he's metal, it reflects the light. But you can just about see the uh, the chevrons on his overalls here. Uh, the Hazar chevrons. So it'll paint up quite nicely. As I say, a little bit disappointed with the flash. But, you know, never mind. 
I'm probably being spoiled by uh, 3D prints, but that's Grushi. He was the least exciting one. I will say that the guy at the store was one of the most miserable people I've ever seen as well. But uh, there you go. That's probably being inside London for you. This guy here, this is a uh, going to be added to my Napoleon in Egypt project when that finally gets underway. This one is General Alexander Dumas. So he is the father, I think, of the, the author. He was known as the Black Count. He wasn't actually black. He was a uh, he was half black, but uh, not that unusual in France at the time. He is in Napoleon, the Ridley Scott film, but in that he's like sub-Saharan black. This guy fought very well in the Egyptian campaign. He was potentially a rival to Napoleon, and he met a slightly sticky end. Um, I want to do a Napoleonic figures video on him because he's a fascinating guy. Now I've got the model. That might um, might encourage me to do it. But this is General Dumas. He's a very early uh, early war general. As you can see, he's got the uh, the more Republican uh, general outfit on. But uh, yeah, very brave. A very esteemed commander. Possibly um, in the early years, Napoleon's equal. But uh, yeah, obviously Napoleon developed to uh, to be the great leader that he was. Now this guy, I don't think we can say he was Napoleon's equal perhaps ever. I don't think we can say he's pretty much anyone's equal. I'm trying to think of some really bad commanders in history. This is General Joachim Murat. So this is him in his rather fancy parade dress. Now I'm planning on doing an Italian army at some point. So he is going to be uh, bunged into that. But there he is. The horse is quite nice. They're quite tall. They're quite big. Um, big minis. Not, I don't necessarily mind that on a commander figure, though. Now, you won't be able to see, because the camera is dog. But just here, you can see his curls peeking out from underneath his chapka. These are really... This is a fantastic model. He's quite thin. I'd like him to be a bit, bit beefier. But, uh, nope, that's absolutely fine. He is going to be a delight to paint. So I'm looking forward to him. Uh, Glenn asks, which manufacturer are these? These are Gringo 40s, which is why I thought I'd mention them. Because I thought we may not have spoken about them on the channel before. We might have done, actually. Um, but as I say, they tend to do character figures. They do a very nice little sal uh, based on the painting where he's leaning against a tree. Um, and to be honest, I really wanted that one as well. But the guy was was just awful. So I couldn't uh, couldn't bring myself to engage in further conversation with him. So uh, I only got that far. I'm, next time when I've got more uh, social battery, I might be able to. I had just been to the Empress Miniatures stand, though, and that was uh, that was painful enough. Uh, Mirac could do good when his ego was kept in check. Yeah, no, that's true, actually. I'm being a, a little facetious there. Uh, he fought one-on-one -on -one combat with the general of the uh, Ottoman army. So uh, fair play to him for that. So he got shot through the mouth as well, which has got to hurt. So this is the next thing I wanted to have a look at. As you can see, I've not opened it myself yet, so it could be empty. It feels empty. So what have we got? That is a uh, the body, the cabin, and the sled. This is my Russian ambulance. This is from the Perrys. Ah, yes, the uh, the cotton wool stuff. How how do I love the? It's not even proper cotton wool. I can't turn it into gun smoke afterwards. Uh, so that's that. So this is the yoke. Um, there we go. That was nicely, uh, nicely bent out of shape there. Um, the sort of apothecary supplies. I'm not sure where they are. I'm not sure what this is either. Um, I'm going to have to get the uh, the picture up, I think. Uh, while that's going on, uh, do you have any ideas to use Victrix and Perry heads for warlord bodies? I've been trying to turn over in my head how to add the... Is that the stock to the head? I can't... Uh, yeah, stock to the head. Um, yeah, with difficulty, I think. The best thing I'd suggest is just to get like a, um, a blob of green stuff. Pop that in the neck hole. Push down with the head and then just cut round it to square it off. That's probably what I would do. Um... Yeah, that's a, that, that's that's probably the way I'd go about it if I'm honest. So um, get um, uh, oh, I've got some warlord. Uh, so let's say I've got some piano miniatures just uh, just.
just drying here in the sun. So let's say this collar wasn't there. I'd put a blob of green stuff in, push the head on top, and then cut round to get it square. You could even go in to get the uh, like the the difference between the edge of the collar and the main the main collar. But uh, I'd probably do that, and then you've got your uh, your Perry head or your uh, Victrix head on your Warlord body. I've also picked up a load of Warlord French sprues, actually. Uh, Warlord Illustrator were basically just giving them away. So um, I was going to absolutely delve in deep, and some guy next to me was like, oh, I'll take one. And I felt, <laughs> I felt really guilty then. So I ended up buying four figures from um, the Wargames, Empor uh, Wargames Illustrated uh, Giants in Miniature range. So I was like, well, I'll take a sprue for each model I've got. So I've got four sprues of uh, uh, Warlord French without the greatcoats in dress uniform, those guys are. So uh, I'll have to think of something to do with them. I'll have to think of a Croatian regiment or something like that that I can do as them. So where are we? What number is the ambulance? Let's see. Number 16. So I'll scroll down to there. Uh, da, 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 da. Wow, this is uh, an interesting one. Let's see. So it looks like the this thing here is like sprung. And that goes at the back. All oh, right, okay, yeah. So those ropes there go into those holes there. Okay, well, that makes sense. I'm going to have to bend it. And bring it back in there. Okay. Okay, so that's... Yeah, Roger so far. That's good. Uh, then on the other side as well. Okay. There's a bit of flash on here. Now, I said I was disappointed by that flash on Grouchy. Uh, I was expecting a, so much flash on this. The uh, the Perry... Oh, dear, dear. Well, let's, uh, let's have a quick review before we do. So I'll come back to them. What's going on in the chat? Um... What mini is that? Grim Harbinger. That was a piano miniatures um, a Bavarian. Uh, a piano miniatures Bavarian. That one. So there's his, there's his noggin. Um, just brought back uh, Black Sails, HMS Victory Kit. Looking forward to building it. It's a really good kit. Uh, really nice. I would have reservations about the masts, that's my only problem. Because the masts are metal, if you're planning on rigging it, the rigging, you either need to super glue it so it stays firm, or you need to replace the metal masts with either resin or plastic ones. I did the Constitution, really, really pleased with it. I absolutely loved it, rigged it all, and then the next time I came to use it, I just, because all the, um, the rigging had gone saggy, it was, uh, oh, it was, it, honestly, it's broken my heart. Right, so let's have a look at this um, Russian ambulance then. So we've seen here that uh, that fits in quite nicely. Now, there's a lot of, um, I think they're called uh, scrolls, I think, or something like that. This is where the metal goes into the uh, the mould. So they're, they're inevitable to an extent, but you don't want them absolutely everywhere, and it looks like they are absolutely everywhere on this kit. So let's clear those up now before we put the... Uh, the coffin on top uh, i think that's where, where he keeps these tinctures and these potions rather than being an ambulance i think it's more of a uh, apothecary wagon but it, it, it'll count as an ambulance quite a big bit of flash there so let's scrape that round now i keep a blunt knife and that's just for scraping so it can cut bits off as well you can cut small parts off like that but uh this one's quite a blunt one i do have a sharp one downstairs that i use for cutting but i don't tend to to use knives to cut stuff so much these days. Um, I got a mate down here to print me some Austrians. Oh yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah. I haven't got around to, uh, to the Austrians yet, but I am looking forward to printing those. I've just set up a um, a plate of Tyrolean rebels actually, so they'll be uh, they'll be getting printed at some point. I want to do a video on um, using uh, like insurgents in the Napoleonic War game. Now this here is like a mold like a mold slip that's pretty shocking that's um that should not have got through quality control that's quite poor indeed so what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to try and scrape down what I might be best off using actually hang on have we got one here there's a file Oh, 
Well, that's some a uh, ASMR for everyone there. Yeah. So you can still see the uh, the line that goes uh, goes down there quite quite badly, but if you run your finger along it, it's not quite as pronounced as it was. He says. Hopefully the the uh, the paint will now cover that. So there we go. All right, so that's that one sort of dealt with. Still not mega thrilled that that one uh, passed quality control, but there you go. So what's what are people planning on for the summer? What's their uh, what's their summer campaigning plans? Anyone interested in the new warlord? Uh, Punic Wars range. It was a bit of a surprise to me that one. I was expecting Imperial Romans, but um, Punic Wars is my Roman period of choice. I actually just bought all the um, Varus miniatures for uh, all the Romans, so I'll be buying their Carthaginians as well. So it's a bit uh, bit of a miss for me, but that's uh, I mean, yeah. Warlord don't have to uh, aim their releases entirely at me, so that's that's fair enough. That's that one done there. And then I think we're going to look at the uh, uh, look at the yoke here as well. Now again, there's a lot of um, a lot of gates here where the uh, the metal flows into the uh, into the mold. This would be quite a nice um, a nice thing to three D print actually. Uh, limbers I tend to find very very expensive. There was one that may have finished yesterday uh, for Prussian artillery limbers and artillery train, which um, I didn't back because it's it's Prussians. But uh, if you're into that kind of thing, and I know many of you are, um, that would have been a good uh, a good buy for a lot of people, I think. Uh, so looking underneath here, there's a ton more. There's one at the end of each of these. Yeah. Let's run that one there. So there we go. I think that's pretty much that done. Um, yeah, it was only a tray of Hungarian infantry. I also bought Clash of Eagles. So I can make a list of under Eagles and then found out the cost to get them. Well, even so, uh, I'm working on three mil Battle of Agra. Wow, okay. Hoping to do a few divisions per side by the summer. Hopefully the full thing by next summer. I've painted about 3,000 minis up already. Funny you should say, Vagram, I printed this out today. This is a potential for the next, uh, for a future battle report. It is the battle of Asper Nestling. This is the uh, the day two, the counter-attack. So I need to talk to General Dan. We need to put together our Austrian armies for that one. But uh, that's uh, on my top quality NHS paper. So thank you. Your tax dollars hard at work there. <laughs> um, Udo's uh, 905 and the Japanese versus the Sengoku Jedi. Is that using the um, uh, Fireforge minis? Because they are really nice. Uh, General Dan and I are hoping to do a uh, Seventh Sun style samurai campaign, which I'm really looking forward to. I've had my samurai built and painted for about five years now. So uh, I finally, I'm looking forward to uh, slinging some katanas with them. Uh, Glenn had the first game of that powder with his dad a few weeks ago. Really liked it. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We really liked it. So I'm looking forward to playing again with some larger forces. Excellent. Well, that's really good news. Uh, was that Napoleonic or was that a different black powder period? Um, uh, just want to think of using some fine wire for larger ship models instead of providing thread for the build. Yeah, that's fair enough. I've also heard people use elastic as well. So it doesn't quite have so much tension on the masts, which can also work as well. I think that's probably a uh, a wise move as well. But uh, yes, no, that's, that's good because the the last thing I'd want is for you to be as disappointed as I was when all the uh, all the rigging started sagging. Got there, bleeding now is this right? Okay, so that one is the thing that attaches the horses to the apothecary wagon. This I think is the base of the actual wagon itself. It certainly looks a lot less. Um, uh, less fancy, doesn't it? So I think I brought the wrong base up as well. I don't think it's going to go on this base. Let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. What the deuce? 
Oh, right, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah. Yes, no, I think I underestimated this apothecary wagon. Um, da, 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 da. Very nice. Oh, it's a recent Kickstarter. Yes, I think I backed that one, actually. It didn't come with any uh, Samurai, though, did it? It's just the Ashigaru, which is which is fine, because you need plenty of Ashigaru as well. Yeah. Uh, Uh, have you been watching Shogun? I assume you have, Clive. Um, it is superb. If you haven't been watching Shogun, then um, I would uh, I would highly recommend. Is what the deuce? <laughs> what the deuce? Uh, it's uh, from Family Guy. The old uh, Stewie says it all the time. Um, um, oh, the irony I find Asper Nestling, uh PBR with the oh, all right, fantastic. So, are you the Austrians or the French in that one? So, I, I think I know. But um, go on, the, uh, put me out of my misery. My project for the summer is about. Oh, I'm going to skip someone. It was Naps, uh, British versus French in 18 Always oh, using AB miniatures. They are so nice. Love AB miniatures. I noticed um, uh, Dom was saying that uh, Salute uh, Essex miniatures, that venerable old company, were being pretty much ignored by everyone. And that was uh, quite a sad thing. Now, I have to say, I didn't even see the Essex miniatures stand because I've got a gazillion. 15 mil Essex miniatures. So I would have uh, added some. I would have also seen if they had any Mike's models with them. But um, I, I suspect they probably didn't. I, I absolutely love Mike's models. I've shown them off before. I think <laughs> they're awesome. Um, right, let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. So, right, let's get the old suspension done first. And then we can take it from there because I don't understand the uh, the next picture. So, I've recently switched to these small glues. This is Turner and Gray make these. Big fan of them because when I invariably glue the lid on, I'm not wasting too much super glue. So really, really big fan of these, like, you know, 0.5 grams or 5 grams worth of um, super glue uh, packs. That's definitely uh, definitely my, my recent go-to. I'll put them on there. Oh. I can hear running water outside and it's quite sunny, so that's a little bit concerning. All right, so I'll just bend that so it fits on the, the sled. Um, now, this one I've already test fitted, so this one should go on okay. He said. Ooh. There we go. So there we go. So that's it on, on its sled. Now, it's not quite square. That's okay. I think that's where the uh, the metal's probably been twisted a little bit. That's okay. I'll push it up onto the base like so. And we'll have a little bit of glue put on the inside. So if there's any spillages, they won't be seen. That's fine. There we are. And then push it down. Now, while that's drying, you can have a cheeky look at the comments. Uh, I'm Ertz, Ertz Herzog Karl Ludwig Johann Josef Lorenz von Osterleich Herzog von Tischen. Okay, of course you are. So, is that Archduke Charles? No, it can't be. I don't know, maybe it is. Uh, and Clive's waiting for the last episode, then subscribing to Hulu for a month. It is absolutely superb. Uh, last night was episode 9 of 10. So, next week. Uh, next Tuesday, the uh, the last one out. Oh, that is Charles. I see Dan would have known that if he was here. Um, next Tuesday uh, is the last one, so uh, that's uh, that's when to get your Hulu. And also for you, Clive, I know that uh, what you're really holding on for is the new series of Meet the Kardashians, which also starts this week, I think. So you'll be <laughs> you'll be able to catch up on that as well. So I know the truth. I know the real reason why you're uh, you hold it off.
Yeah, no, I went for a uh, a rather different uh, uh, rather different period to one I've been working on recently. It's one I worked on a while ago, uh, and I bought myself a first a 1914 uh, German army, which uh, I've bought myself a 1914 British army a while ago. So it's nice to finally uh, finally get the Germans to face them. I might avoid the Kardashians like the play. Yeah, yeah, all right, Clive. Yeah, yeah, I believe you, mate. Millions wouldn't, but uh, but I believe you. So I'm just um just clearing up this uh this box. Now this is where the uh, the driver would sit, I believe. There's also uh, probably got supplies in there as well. Jesuits bark and all that good stuff. Um oh no, it looks like that goes on the back. So there you go. Now this thing here. It looks like that's the the peg there that goes in the hole here, and that's what makes that's what attaches to the pack horses. That's what makes the full thing. Now that this is the base I brought up for it, so the full thing is not going to go on the base, but the um, the, the wagon itself will. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use the uh, the horses yet. We'll have to see. I don't want to use an absolutely humongous base. Um, cause it's just it's supposed to go next to an infantry unit. I don't want it to take up too much real estate. Uh, so that's that, that's that. Now this glues to the bottom here. Okay. These instructions are absolutely appalling by the way. Um, so well done, uh, well done Perry's. Uh, I think it might go in. Like these, so pop that in there, and then I think those axles. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I've definitely underestimated the uh, the complexity of this kit. Or my, <laughs> or my stupidity, which is uh, equally possible. Um, uh, it looks like that sits on like so. But that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh Unless it's upside down. Oh, yeah, no, that'll be upside down, won't it? Even so, that's still not fantastic, is it? Um, hmm. Now, according to this, the pin goes down. So, now, it should be the same either way. I can't imagine that there's a forward and a backwards. Because the um, things are the same. Unless it goes, oh, hang on, that seems to seems to fit quite nicely. Yeah. This is like um, watching a monkey try and do a, a Rubik's cube. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm aware of the top quality uh, top quality television. This is. Um, <laughs> Give me a banana, and uh, I might be uh, I might be able to get it a bit sooner. Um, well, I think I might actually have found the solution. I think the solution might be to rest it on here, and then pour super glue on it until it works. <laughs> I don't think that's the uh, the proper way of doing it. Um, all right, so these things here, that one and that one, they go on to the yoke. So that's this is nothing to do with the main assembly. That's the thing at the back. And then there's like a there's like a toilet pull there. So oh, that's my belly rumbling. Let's um let's have a closer look. So hmm. Right. It looks like so I'll move you out of the way. 
this is the uh, uh, the main body, uh, and this is the big wheels. So let's glue that on the main body, and then that may restrict some of the places we can put the base, and that might help us get to where it's supposed to be. Um, there's a World War One U.S. Marine kick. Oh, is that? Ooh, right, okay. That's an interesting one. One of my favourite stories from the um, the Marines in the First World War is they the Americans came in, they were very gung ho, shocker, and um, they basically the French were like, yeah, yeah, you need to be super sneaky and attack the uh, the Germans this way. And the Marine Colonel, I think he was a captain. I'm sure most of you know this story. Um, so yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. So they were attacking, and uh, the attack's not going so well. So the Frenchman says to the Americans, uh, right, you know, we need to uh, pull back. It's, uh, you know, pull back. The, the attack's not going anywhere. And uh, the colonel replies to him, pull back? Hell, we only just got here. Um, so I think it was a colonel. But uh, yeah, that was quite a famous. And in fact, that's now their, um, their retreat hell is uh, one of the Marine regiments' motto, which I, uh, I particularly like. It's a, a very American story, but I absolutely love it. It's yeah, you know, it's like uh, Cambron saying "mad," or um, you know, uh, the head of the Imperial Guard cavalry say, uh, "Lift your heads up, men! These are bullets, not turds, and things like that." It's all all part of that good stuff. The French really held me up. Oh, this is Aspen Essling with a mass cavalry assault and the first day's ending as a result. All oh, right, okay. Uh, is uh, Despagne still alive? He was one of the heavy cavalry commanders. Who was killed at Aspen Essling? I really like the Spaniard. I think he is a bit of an underrated, uh, underrated commander. Because you don't really get that many sort of standout heavy cavalry commanders. Probably Kellerman, but the uh, the other ones tend to be people like Murat or LaSalle. Uh, they tend to be the more light cavalry uh, commanders. Now they were certainly uh, legends in their own lunchtime, so that helps. But um, yeah, I, I think Despania was a uh, a bit of an underrated, underrated commander. Uh, I did say the Aspen Church. Oh, right, okay, but it gave it up as it was untenable. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd, a bit like the Granary in the actual battle. Then, uh, Alid Charles. Uh, unfortunately, I'm late, but I'm glad. Well, it's nice to have you here, Alid. So late, better late than never. So, or you could be like Gandalf and say that you're never really never late, but you arrive precisely when you mean to. I said to someone the other day, uh, you've been labelled a disturber of the peace. And they had no idea what I was talking about. I was very disappointed. That made me feel very old. As did one of the nurses telling me she wasn't alive during the... What was it she wasn't alive during? Something in the early 2000s anyway, which was very upsetting to me. Uh, I do love the old school approach of the Perrys. Not the most welcoming approach to building miniatures, but it does feel like an achievement. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Mm. I didn't find Napoleon's coach was that bad, actually, Steve. Although the worst part of it was I tried to put some glass in the windows and I got glue on my fingers and then put that on the uh, the plastic I was using for the glass, which made it all frost up. So it looks a bit shit now. I need to, um, I need to redo it, I think. Uh, yeah, the Perry's really felt like taking the training wheels off after putting together so many walls. <laughs> yeah. Does the axle go inside the runners? I mean, it could do. Yeah, I think so. I, I assume this here goes in the middle here. There's like a little V to catch it. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'm so glad that gets halfway through and then gets confused. You'll see. <laughs> Well, look, man, with enough uh, with enough super glue, anything will uh, anything will stick. Now that to me does not look right at all. However, it's getting the super glue. Now the question is, though, where are the wheels attached? All oh, right, okay. So the all oh, right, okay. I, I'm going to have to leave the whole thing together then. Because the front wheels, these little wheels, I'm going to catch you with my little wheels. 
they are attached to the uh, the limber here. So, right, we are going to have to do it as one big model then. Okay, dokie. I'm not going to be able to glue it onto the base today then. That's a bit of a shame. Never mind. Right, so let's let's do that then. Whew, I think I might need a medic by uh, the time I finish this. I thought, oh, yeah, I wonder if this is going to be long enough to fill the full hour. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it is. Well, luckily, I've got some uh, piano Bavarians I can uh, wax lyrical about if need be. But uh, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere near that far. There's an absolute ton of flash on these wheels. Now, I can't imagine that these uh, moulds are particularly hit hard. So there shouldn't really be this much uh, much flashing on them. But, uh, but there is. So, let's uh, get it down there. So Perry's slightly disappointed with your uh, Russian ambulance apothecary wagon. But... Not necessarily the end of the world. Oh, some more a ASMR. Oh, you guys listen to this as you're going to sleep. You are the lucky ones. I've, I've never understood that a ASMR. I just assume it's dirty. dirty I don't know. Uh, um, I think he was captured, if I remember. Um, we were just talking about the, front, the uh, Marine. The Marine Captain? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe. Uh, I miss the... <laughs> it's probably difficult. You know what? It, it doesn't look as difficult. It doesn't look like it should be difficult, should it? It is the uh, Russian two-horse apothecary wagon with wounded and surgeons and orderlies from Perry Miniatures. This is going to be my vignette for Under Eagles to Glory. If, if, if I get to play, I may just be judging. So uh, we'll have to see. The other thing that I'm going to need to do is in the last battle report you may have seen as the battle went on my russian army fell apart more and more not not morale wise but actual miniatures wise so i think i'm gonna have to go and do some uh, a review of the troops and um and repair them if you'd like to see the review of the troops uh let me know and it's not just me being like oh yeah this is my collection here yeah it'll be more of a sort of right this is what i've got this is what i need uh, this is, you know, what I need to buy. This is what I can convert. You know, things like that. If there's something that you'd be interested in, let me know. I can do a video on them. Russians are pro my Russian army is probably small and big enough to be interesting, but small enough that I can probably get it all on camera at the same time. My uh, French, uh, probably not so much. We are failing uh, Spukari to build. The Perry's, excuse me, the Perry's uh, apothecary wagon. I, in fact, I would even go as far as to say spectacularly failing. But uh, at the moment, we are doing relatively okay. He said, hello, Chesbury. Um, I should have said hello, James and Spookari as well. So hello, chaps. Uh, there you go. If you enjoy the live streams, um, then uh, those of you who don't know, I was on um, uh, the Plastic Crack podcast uh, last Monday, not the Monday just gone, the, mon the Monday before, and you can find that on Boots on the Table with Dom. That was a uh, really fun evening. I really enjoyed it. Got some um, Gentleman Jack that I bought duty-free in America, so I was enjoying drinking that while chatting with the guys. Um, so yeah, go and check that out on Dom's channel, Boots on the Table with Dom, if you've not seen it already. Uh, right. Here comes the moment of truth. I suspect these might supposed to be a bit further in. Or maybe, hang on. Yeah, let's try. Uh, let's try this. When you've put the super glue onto the joins, 
that's the best time to start experimenting i find so <laughs> i am of course being sarcastic it, it's really not uh what i'm trying to do now is i'm trying to bend this back up that's too far that looks silly Now it's forcing out the front, so I don't think that's right either. Let's stick with plan A. And deploy the super glue. It's going to go in there, it's going to go in there. Uh, right. Hmm. I think I've, I've <laughs> I think I've broken it more. Let's leave it there for now. Let's see if that can dry. Let's head to the chat where horrible metal wagons don't await me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you can see, uh, Chibri, I certainly do. Uh, finally got people in my group other than me to buy models. Hooray! Italians, so nothing useful. Well, I don't know. But uh, more back up to my French. Uh, Italians were not too bad. They were uh, not too bad. They were certainly better than the Westphalians or the Neapolitan troops. So, you know, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Spukari's just got back into points with the Polish-Austrian war. Austrians, okay. Haven't got any metals for them yet. Well, if you're planning on getting any metal wagons for them, I can. I can recommend against it. So, the right side of playing epic scale, I don't need to face the horror of metal wagons. Yeah, absolutely. Although I've said that, I've um, got ready to print some ten mil Tomb King chariots, which I am. Um, I, I can't. I can't quite bring myself to uh, to do it. Hello, I see the light has returned to you. Yes, yes, with the glory of British summertime. In fact, it's quite nice at the moment. We've got some cumulostratus clouds outside, by the look of it. Um, yeah, it's quite pleasant out there today. So, yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, did you miss anything in particular? You missed me gluing my fingers to uh, the Perry's wagon. Um, and, oh, they captured General Despani. Oh, dear. Okay, well, at least he's not dead, I suppose. Um, Italians are good if the other guys ever play ball. The good thing about Italians as well is they, they the Italians never surrender. They just change sides. So that's always good. Um, I also had a quick look, Andreas, at the Gringo 40 models I bought recently as well. So if you've not seen any of those, uh, back at the beginning of the video, we had a quick look at Murat, Grouchy, and Alexandre Dumas, uh, which are they're really nice models, actually. Um, I would first know Prussians or Bavarians. I can then I can buy. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's. I mean, Prussians are certainly a choice, a lifestyle choice. I tend to find. Uh, Bavarians are super cool. So who doesn't love Bavarians and their ginormous hats? So, right, so... Uh, don't fall off. There we go. Look at that. Parfait. Although, having said that, mm, not quite, but, but close enough. Close enough. Do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And I have certainly taken that to heart. So... I've got two of these little boxes. Do they both go on, or just, just one of them? And I've got a spare one. Oh, no, there's a front box and a rear box. Okay. Let's see which way around they are. I uh, don't think it matters. Nah, it doesn't like it matters. Okay, so we've had some success. Happy with that. So if you're watching this video and you can make it to uh, with Eagle under Eagles to glory, you'll have to come just to see the wagon. I mean, that's... This yeah, like seeing that chimpanzees completed Rubik's cube, a scientific wonder. And let's see which way around this one goes. A little bit of a uh, little bit of flash on the clasp there. Um, right, so it goes with the the opening at the front. So that would make sense. That's not too bad. That rests on a little ledge there. That's all right. As I say, there's one on the front as well. Uh, so I'm going to pop that down here. Mm. 
Just make sure there's no flash on there. Just a little bit on the corner. Get rid of that, there we go. A little bit of glue down here. There we go. There we go, pop that in there to dry. And there we go, happy with that. Oh, uh, sounds like I have to take a glance. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 they are lovely models, Andreas. I can, I can say with confidence that they are really, really nice models. Um, Bob Creature, it was lovely to have you here. Thank you very much for popping by. No worries. Print, uh, painting 3D printed uh, burden sharpshooters for America. Oh, that's cool. Uh, out of curiosity, have I seen the new Warriors of Atlantic Plastic Afghan Cavalry? I have not. No. Um, all Games of Atlantic. I've seen a lot of their stuff recently. I've been buying some of their files. I have just bought... Again, some of you who um, uh, saw me on boots on the table... Or well, the Plastic Crack podcast will know that one of my uh, great loves is actually biblical warfare, and they do a fantastic set of Dendra armor warriors, which are always super cool. Right, let's have a look. Oh, I love their new knights as well. I forgot about them. No, oh, you just reminded me about those. Uh, where are we then? Ancients to colonial, maybe. Uh, this website is poo. Uh, what we're looking for, Afghan. So that'll be Imperial Conquests, I would have thought, wouldn't it? Uh, Afghan Cavalry, here we go. Let's have a look. I mean, I use, as you know, I use the Afghan Infantry um, as uh, Ottoman Infantry. Um, so I'm not that um, that fussy. No, they look really good to me. Uh, there's the ones with the mountain ones with Gisales. They've got the big sort of uh, floppy turbans. These guys have got like, um, I don't know, they look a bit like bear skins. So I probably wouldn't use those. The huge poofy turbans and the ones that cover the nose and mouth, I'd use those ones. Uh, and then you've got ones that are like the astrakhan cap type. So I probably wouldn't use those either. But I would say, yeah, by and large, absolutely. You could definitely use those as um, I, either uh, bashi basooks or poor uh, Marmalukes, or just Arab cavalry as well. Oh, they look nice, yeah. Uh, Bavarians are going to be what does my wallet in one day. We should all hope to be spectacularly bedazzled. Bavarians for Franco-Prussian War and Napoleonics on the go at the moment. So uh, I feel your Bavarian-flavoured pain. I don't know what that Bavarian-flavour would be. It'd be quite a good flavour. It should be like beer and bratwurst, wouldn't it? So that was the, um, the base I was originally planning on having it on. But um, I think I'm going to have to put it on an oval base rather than the round one uh, because I've also got some casualties as well. Now, let's have a quick uh, quick shifty of these. These are going to um, spruce up the base a little bit. I'm going to have to knock it on the head about 7 o'clock today, guys. So, hi, Dom. Nice to see you. So, these are the wounded. So, let's uh, snip these off. So, taking a break from his absolute devastation with the Santa cannon. He's uh, helping this guy here. Now, there's terrible, terrible mold line on this. Again, it looks almost like a mold slip. That's a massive one. But uh, let's get rid of that. Ugh. Pretend that that one never happened. Uh, with the Russians, I can't imagine that they had... I don't know I don't know this for a fact, but I can't imagine they had a particularly well-maintained um, medical uh, arm. So I assume that having a priest here or possibly a Cossack, I think he's probably a priest, is um, it's probably who would have been doing most of the uh, the medical stuff. Um, priests and nuns and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this guy is like limping uh, with his musket still. His musket's not particularly well cast. That's, uh, it's not great. So let's, uh, let's snip off this bottom here. And try and give it a semblance of uh, of looking like a weapon, rather than just a chunk of uh, chunk of wood. 
Well, it might be easier to cut the lock off and paint it as a jungle wood, to be honest. But uh, yeah, no, not a uh, not great cast, this one. So I would have to say with the Perrys, um, and I suspected this coming in, if I'm honest, it's a little bit of a caveat emptor, a little bit of buyer's beware. I was expecting the quality to not be as high as some of their other figures. But these are uh, these are quite poor. They need, they need quite a lot of cleanup. Um, yes, I mean I get it. It's not necessarily the end of the world, and it's all part of the uh, the process. But um, as other models go, these are not great. Um, will I do any more videos on the Bavarians? Uh, I hope so. I'm painting up another battalion at the moment, so. Um, there will be more. Um, I do quite like the Bavarians as well. They're quite a cool army. Um, so, yes, there will be more um, more videos featuring the Bavarians in battles and perhaps doing a deep dive into them as well. Uh, but we're going to need to uh, finish some of the other deep dives first. So, what on earth is this guy doing? It looks like he... I don't know what he's doing. It's like he's corking a barrel. I don't think he is, though. I don't think he's supposed to be treating a wounded guy. But uh, maybe even this guy. He's got no feet. Yeah. Oh, hang on. He's got a... No, yes. Yeah. So I think he's supposed to be sort of doing something to him. Something unpleasant. With these guys holding him down, perhaps. And there's this one here, and then there's... Oh, no, he's holding his feet, right, okay. I thought you'd been a victim of the Armenian Mafia or something. And he's leaning over him like that, holding him. I could I could just go on the uh, the webpage and have a look uh, at the picture, couldn't I? That would make more sense. Ah, right, okay, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, well, that's cool. No, I like that one. That's like a cool little vignette. Um, yeah, no, that's groovy. I like that one. Um, and there's supposed to be an orderly. Where is he? Oh, he's here. So he's calling someone over for uh, unpleasantness. He's a nice model as well. This guy here, he's absolutely tiny. Look at this guy. He has not been eating his wheat uh, And then there's another guy. Who's he? Who's he go with? Um, all right, he's tending the horses. All right, okay, that's cool. So there's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of infantry models in here. Um, you've got uh, the like the doctor or uh, orderly. You've got the actual doctor doing some surgery. These three are a little set. He's holding the horses. And then he's a nice wounded counter. So uh, I probably won't put him on the base. I use him as a casualty marker. Uh, and then the rest will go on the uh, on the base with the, uh, the actual thing. Because if we're going to use quite a large base, we're going to need to fill it with, uh, with interesting stuff. So I'll clean those up in my own time. That's it for today. The wagon has finally been built. Uh, I have the strength of 10 and the problem-solving skills of a chimpanzee we have discovered. So that's, that's good. I think I'm probably slightly below, slightly below a magpie. Definitely below an octopus. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I'm probably chimp level. I'll probably go with that one. Uh uh, the Russians don't need uh, doctors. Vodka and a quick pray and good to go. That's true, actually. <laughs> uh, jewelers' files are my favorite to trim or convert figures. Yes, I've heard about that. Also, jewelers' um, saws as well. I've heard are very good. Uh, are you doing more series about the generals of all sides? I'm currently, I know I've been saying this for a long time, currently doing one on General Rayevsky. Um, but yes, I would like to do more on those. Any recommendations of Bavarian greatcoat paint? Yeah, it's like a weird sort of bluey grey, isn't it? I've just gone with grey, dark blue, and a skeleton horde, like a, a sort of bone colour uh, for mine. I'm not bothered going for that weird sort of bluey grey thing because uh, I just wanted to keep it simple, really. Uh, in my sort of brain canon, the um, uh, the French have just provided them with their greatcoats, so, uh, so that's fine. And quickly, one final thing before I go. I recently bought um, a load of files 
from Turner Miniatures. And our Turner Miniatures is a guy who he was an English teacher in, I want to say, Mongolia. It could have been Vietnam, but I think it was actually Mongolia. And he wanted to do some naval gaming. So he made his own ships out of like bits of wood, but he wasn't very happy with them. So he learned how to 3D sculpt. So he 3D sculpted his own range of ships. And I've printed uh, this one here. This is a Dutch 80 gunner. So these are these are pre-Napoleonic, but they could, could be used in the Napoleonic era. And they are absolutely stunning. They are gorgeous models. So, I mean, you can see it's absolutely festooned with guns. You can either do um, the guns run out or you could do all the portholes closed. Um, now, again, you're not going to be able to see it because of the, the piss poor quality of the camera. But the back has got all the, like, the, the giant Dutch coat of arms on it. And the windows with the leading in and everything like that. They are absolutely spectacular. I'm not sure what's going on here. I suspect that's probably um, uh, not supposed to be on there. But these are just absolutely gorgeous. So if you're interested in ships, and I know not many of you are, which is a shame because it's it's pretty cool. Well, I think it is anyway. Um, then Turner Miniatures, you can do a lot worse. And these are phenomenal. And the best thing about them as well. Is they're hollow, so they don't use that much resin, and they've got the name of the ship on the bottom as well. So really, really good. But that is a super, um, super tangent. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we could probably do with making that rear mast a whole bit bigger. I'll worry about that later. But that's it. So thank you for joining me on the first, um, like uh, the regular live streams of 2024. We got there in the end. Battle mat, welcome. I am just about to, we're just wrapping up though. So <laughs> that's nothing best. Right, quick, battle mat's here, everyone, go. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're just wrapping up for now, but there's an hour's content for you to uh, to scroll back on and enjoy. Thank you very much for, <laughs> don't worry about it, mate. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. And it'll be every Wednesday from six o'clock. I'm thinking I might also do the odd other day as well, maybe like uh, Napoleonic Wargaming after dark, a bit of a, uh, a Q&A where maybe I'm not um, painting, maybe I'm just hanging out and, um, you know, we can have a chat and just chill, a bit like um, Mordy and Glory does. But thank you very much for joining me. Yes, Dom, they are absolutely phenomenal, really, really nice. Turner Miniatures, cannot recommend them highly enough. You can get them on Wargaming 3D. Um, thank you very much for joining me, and I shall see you guys next time.